Robots are getting real, like dangerously real. One of them just snapped mid-demo and started swinging at engineers like it was auditioning for a Terminator reboot. And while that clip set social media on fire, it's only the start. In China, a car company is putting life-sized blonde humanoids with ponytails and sunglasses into showrooms to sell vehicles. Over in Germany, a robotics company is rolling out a humanoid worker that runs eight hours straight and costs less than a Tesla. Across the ocean, in California, Berkeley just dropped a $5,000 DIY humanoid you can print at home and people are already tweaking it to walk better and live longer. Meanwhile, Hyundai is going full sci-fi, bringing Boston Dynamics Atlas robots onto the factory floor to build 300,000 electric cars a year. So let's talk about it. Um, but before we jump in, just a quick heads up for anyone getting serious about generative AI, whether you're building AI influencers, avatars, talking heads, or using them in videos and real projects. We've just launched a brand new advanced course inside our paid school community. This one goes way deeper than the usual intro stuff and takes you all the way to deploying your own AI digital persona and actually making money with it. Our free school group already has over 600 learners exploring the fundamentals, but if you're ready for the full deep dive, the link's below. And in the next course, we'll go even further. Custom poses, angles, outfit changes, branded items. New content drops regularly, so check the link below before the price goes up. All right, now the viral robot freakout clip is already framed as a meme, but the clip itself is almost too on the nose to ignore. Source, the Belarusian TV outfit Nexta, which reposted factory security footage shot somewhere in China. The robot in question, a half-finished humanoid dangling from a construction crane like a marionette, was meant to be going through a routine motion range test. Two engineers stood underneath, hands on tablets, reading out servo IDs. Suddenly, every joint spiked. The bot windmilled its arms, kicked its feet, yanked the suspension line sideways, and slid its welded stand across polished concrete. A desktop PC smashed to the floor, a bucket of fasteners scattered, and both engineers scrambled out of reach while the crane hook groaned overhead. The whole tantrum lasted maybe 20 seconds, but it drew more than 100,000 views in four hours and spawned 69 comment thread jokes about Skynet. One viewer wrote, Sarah Connor was feffing right. <laughs> Another posted a gif of Robocop's ED-209 falling downstairs, and a surgical resident admitted the scene reminded him that a Da Vinci console is just motors and firmware after all. That clip parallels a wave of headline-friendly prototypes China has paraded all winter. Pudu Robotics's D9 can walk at 4.5 mph, climb stairs and take a hip check without tumbling. Clone Robotics's February demo of the proto-clone musculoskeletal android flexed synthetic tendons and promised it would one day cook, clean, and hold a conversation. Commenters loved the tech, but called the atmosphere dystopian. The outburst handed them fresh ammunition. It showed how violently a torque value can run away when the safety envelope isn't nailed down. Meanwhile, 500 kilometers west of Shanghai, Cherry Automotive is leaning into the opposite mood, charm. The company, run out of municipal Wuhu and building cars since the mid-90s, has decided its next showroom employee will be Mornene, a life-size blonde android wearing wraparound sunglasses and a ponytail. Cherry partnered with a robotics outfit called AI Moga in June 2024 and demoed Mornene at last year's Shanghai Auto Show. This week, the robot reappeared on stage behind Cherry International President Zhang Guibing in a lineup of identical units. Zhang told dealers, the market for humanoids has more potential than vehicles and declared AI MOGA is the real future for the Cherry company. The price, roughly the same as a car, so figure mid five figures, though any dealer willing to write a purchase order gets an undisclosed discount. Even at list price, 220 units are promised for delivery in 2025, and one is already greeting shoppers in a Malaysian dealership. Dispensing bottled water with carbon fiber fingers and answering trim package questions in a pleasantly synthetic Alto. The shades aren't a fashion gag. They hide a surround view camera array that stitches 360 degrees vision, and every fingertip carries capacitive pads that can feel when a customer taps 
a brochure. A social media clip of Morneen's junk in the trunk dance routine at the WooHoo launch drew a comment section nearly as long as the robot's spec sheet. One top-rated reply wondered whether the corporate dress code needed updating for plastic blondes. If Cherry is selling vibes, Iggy GmbH is selling spreadsheet math. The Cologne-based motion plastics company spent 15 years harvesting tribology data for low-friction polymers. Now it's packaging those parts into a full humanoid called Iggy Rob that undercuts almost every Western competitor. Headline number, 47,999 euros, roughly $54,500 at today's rate, which is a third the price of Agility's Digit and half the rumored price of Tesla's Optimus. Iggy stands 1.7 meters tall, but it doesn't walk. The torso bolts onto Iggy's Rebel Move Autonomous Mobile Base, a wheeled platform with a three-point bearing that can carry 50 kilograms of its own mass plus 100 kilograms of payload. Two Rebel cobot arms sprout from the shoulders, each sporting a six Axis Hymonic gearbox stack, and Igus's bionic hands clamp payloads with polymer gears that never need grease. Navigation comes from a roof mount LiDAR and paired 3D cameras at eye level. Runtime is eight hours on a single lithium pack. The whole bundle talks ROS2 is CE certified for Europe and slots into VDA 5050 fleet management dashboards that German factories already use for tuggers and pallet movers. Ingus's sales pitch is brutally practical. They'll ship an evaluation unit, let your team test it in a live cell, maybe at a reception desk, maybe clearing cutlery in the canteen, then fly in an engineer to tweak pick points. If the trial makes financial sense, you keep the robot and pay the invoice. All right, underpinning that confidence is a three-step roadmap. The 2022 Rebel Cobalt Arm proved the drivetrain. The 2023 Rebel Hand won an RBR50 award for under $1,000 dexterity, and the 2024 Rebel Move AMR handled the powertrain. Iggy is just the pieces screwed together. Across the Atlantic, University of California Berkeley's robotics lab is taking the price war almost to hobby level. Their Berkeley Humanoid Light project dropped complete CAD, firmware, and reinforcement learning scripts onto GitHub with an NSF grant tag. The robot stands 0.8 meters tall, call it a toddler, with 22 cycloid gearboxes you can print on any home FDM machine that handles a 200 by 200 by 200 millimeter envelope. Hardware bill in the US comes to $4,312, sourced from Shenzhen, and it's $3,236. The costliest line items are 10 high torque 6512 actuators at $188 each and 12 lighter 5010s at $136 each. Control is a $120 Intel N95 mini PC pushing four 1 megabit CAN 2.0 buses at 250 Hertz. Power is a six cell 4000 MAH LiPo giving 30 minutes of runtime. On paper, that looks anemic, but Berkeley's party trick is software. They trained a walking policy entirely in simulation and watched it transfer zero shot to real hardware. The release video shows the bot stepping off a lab bench, shrugging its shoulders, writing its initials with a felt tip, stacking foam cubes, and spinning a scrambled Rubik's cube solving will take firmware V2.0. The paper's appendix introduces a tongue-in-cheek performance per dollar metric. Peak joint torque divided by height, normalized by price. By that measure, the $5,000 platform outranks several six-figure commercial machines. Reddit's verdict is split. Half the commenters call it the Raspberry Pi moment for legged robots. The rest say the demo looks like toys from 2013 and warn that 3D printing gear teeth in PLA is a reliability nightmare. Either way, the repos issues tab already hosts pull requests for longer pipe batteries and alternative gear ratios, which was exactly the point. Barracleam wants hundreds of garage tinkerers pushing the design forward 
without waiting for corporate roadmaps. If Berkeley is pushing from the bottom and Igu's from the middle, Hyundai is battering the ceiling, the Korean automaker closed its purchase of Boston Dynamics in 2021. Now it's folding the Atlas platform, yes, the parkour doing celebrity robot, into a new factory complex in Bryan County, Georgia. The plant sits at the core of a $21 billion US investment package, $6 billion of which is earmarked for automation and mobility tech. Hyundai already deploys Boston Dynamics four-legged spot for inspection rounds. Bringing in two-legged Atlas units is a bigger leap. The goal is 300,000 electric and hybrid vehicles per year, feeding a plan to push U.S. production capacity from 700,000 cars this year to 1.2 million by the end of the decade. Hyundai hasn't said how many Atlases it's buying, but supply chain whispers point to tens of thousands of robots across multiple categories. Atlas's appeal is clear. It can step over conveyor tracks, climb stairs, and thread through weld booths designed for humans, which means Hyundai can retool software faster than it could repour concrete. Labor unions are publicly worried about job displacement, yet management argues that uptime and safety statistics will speak for themselves once the bots clock in. The welding cell of 2026 might look like a human tech with a tablet, three Atlas units hauling stamped panels, and a dozen fixed ABB wrists performing spot welds, a species mashup the industry has never seen at scale. So with robots now selling us cars, building them, and occasionally throwing a tantrum mid-test, how long before one replaces you at work? Drop your thoughts in the comments, hit like if this made you rethink a few things, and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.